Hi boys and girls, it's Ivan time and I came into the living room to get all snuggled up onto the couch with a blanket. It's only 45 degrees outside. It's freezing. And just to think that last week we were wearing shorts and running around outside. Oh, it's too cold for me to be out there today. I can tell you I would not be happy if I was having recess duty. So let's find out what's happening with Ivan. I've heard the Jambo story many times. Stella says that humans found it odd that the huge silverback didn't kill the boy. Why, I wonder, was that so surprising? The boy was young, scared, and alone. He was, after all, just another great ape. Bob nudges me with his cold nose. Ivan, he says, why aren't you and Stella in a zoo? I look at Stella. She looks at me. She smiles sadly with her eyes. Just a little, the way only elephants do. Just lucky, I guess, she says. The new neighbor arrives after the four o'clock show. Did you think about the new neighbor after we read yesterday? Who do you think the new neighbor is? We're just about to find out. When the truck comes lumbering towards the parking lot, Bob scampers over to inform us. Bob always knows what's happening. He's a useful friend to have, especially when you can't leave your domain. You know, boys and girls, right now, friends are so, so, so very important. Um, connecting with friends that you haven't been able to talk to in a really long time or connecting with friends that you talk to every day is so very, very important. I've been connecting with a lot of my friends over the past few weeks, um, talking about stuff that we did a long time ago, um, places that we worked a long time ago, um, and things that we remembered about doing what we liked best about school. I've been talking to a friend that I haven't seen since sixth grade, and all of a sudden she's back in my life, and it's like she never left. It's pretty cool. Friends are amazing, amazing people. So remember to keep in touch with your friends, send them a note, write them an email, or make them a cool Google slide of fun stuff that you've done together, and then you can send it off to them. Pretty cool, right? Friends are super important for all of us. With a groan, Mac lifts the sliding metal door near the food court, the place where deliveries are made. A big white truck is backing up to the door, belching with smoke. When the driver opens the truck, I know that Stella is right. The baby elephant is inside. I see her trunk poking out from the blackness. She is. I'm glad for Stella, but when I get a glance at her, I see she is not good at all. Stand back, everyone, Mac yells. We've got a new arrival. This is Ruby, folks. 600 pounds of fun to save our sorry butts. This gal is going to sell us some tickets. Smack and two men climb into the black cave of the truck. We hear noise, scuffling, a word Mac uses when he's angry. Ruby makes a noise, too, like one of the little trumpets they sell at the gift store. Moo, Mac says. But still, there is no Ruby. Move! He tries again. Well, I haven't gotten all day. Inside her domain, Stella paces as much as she's able. Two steps one way, two steps the other. She slaps her trunk against the rusty metal bars. She grumbles. Stella, I ask, did you hear the baby? Stella mutters something under her breath, a word she uses when she's angry. Relax, Stella, I say. It will be okay. Ivan, Stella says, it will never, ever be okay. And I know enough to stop talking. Why is she saying not everything will be okay? Why does she seem frustrated and hitting the domain and moving from side to side and hitting her trunk and knowing it's time to stop talking? You know, sometimes when you're frustrated, the best thing to do is stop talking because you don't want to say something that you're going to ever regret. So maybe Stella is thinking the exact same thing. The men are still yelling. Some of the yelling is at each other, but most is at Ruby. We hear scrambling, pounding, shifting. The side of the truck shudders. I'm starting to like this elephant, 
Bob whispers. I'm getting the big one, Max says. Maybe she can coax that stupid brat out of the truck. <gasps> Max seems super angry. Mac opens Stella's door. Come on, girl, he urges. He unties the rope attached to the floor bolt. Stella pushes pa past Mac, nearly knocking him over. She rushes as best as she can, limping heavily towards the open back door of the truck. She catches her swollen foot on the edge of the ramp and winces. Blood trickles down. Halfway up the ramp, she pauses. The noise in the truck stops. Ruby falls silent. Why do you think Ruby might be silent? Do you think that perhaps she's happy to see Stella? Someone that's like her own? Oh, it's so emotional to think that she was in this truck and she doesn't want to come out and maybe she's scared or frightened or just doesn't understand. Slowly, Stella makes her way up the rest of the ramp, groans under her weight, and I can tell how much she is hurting by the awkward way she moves. At the top of the incline, she stops. She pokes her trunk into the emptiness. It waits. The tiny gray trunk appears again. Shyly, it reaches out, tasting the air. Stella curl curls her trunk around the babies. They make soft, rumbling sounds. We wait some more. A hush falls over the entire big top mall. Thud, thud, step, step, pause, step, step, pause. And there she is. So small she can fit underneath Stella with room to spare. Her skin sags and she sways unsteadily as she makes her way down the ramp. Not the greatest specimen, Max says, but I got her cheap from the bankrupt circus out west. They had her shipped here from Africa. Only had her a month before they went bust. He gestures towards Ruby. Thing is, people love babies. Baby elephants, baby gorillas. Heck, give me a baby alligator and I could make a killing. Stella ushers Ruby towards his domain. Mac and the two men follow. Stella's door... Ruby hesitates. Mac gives Ruby a shove, but she doesn't budge. Doggone it, get a clue, Ruby, he mutters, but Ruby isn't moving, and neither is Stella. Mac grabs a broom. He raises it, raises it. Instantly, Stella steps in front of Ruby to shield her. Get in the cage, both of you, Mac shouts. Stella stares at Mac, considering... Gently but firmly, using her trunk, she nudges Ruby into her domain. Only then does Stella enter. Max slams the door shut with a clang. I see two trunks entwined. I hear Stella whispering. Poor kid, says Bob. Welcome to the Exit 8 Big Top Mall and Video Arcade. Home, the one and only Ivan. Ugh. Oh. That was hard to listen to. It's hard to think about. Obviously, Ruby was so scared. Stella comforted her to get her back in the domain, but Max seems angry. He doesn't seem happy. Seems like he's really struggling. And remember, no matter how ever, how frustrated you ever get, how angry you ever get, how mad you are at something, if you can't figure it out or you're just blah, 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 frustrated, is never a time to take that out on anyone else or anything else. And boys and girls, I know you are all amazing and sweet and wonderful. Sometimes we get stuck. But remember, the people around us are here to support us. Ivan teaches me a lot. I hope he does for you too. Boys and girls, I miss you so much. And I am super excited that we are able to spend this time together. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Get some exercise. Read a lot. And share anything you want to with me. I am here each and every day for you. Bye, boys and girls.